Today I'd like to go over a program called Veracrypt. It's based on um, an older program called TrueCrypt that's been around for a long time. I've been a user for a number of years and I find it invaluable for encrypting data. It's actually pretty robust and allows you to, to encrypt anything from a flash drive to a full system drive to external drives, pretty much whatever you want to do. The thing I use, I find to be most useful though, is a um, file container, which would be stored on your, on your hard drive. And I'm going to show you how to do that today. So the first thing you have to do obviously is download the software. I'll include the link in, in the description below so that you can go ahead and download it. It's completely free. They work on a donation model. So if you like it, you know, please go ahead and donate. Keep these guys going because it's actually a really, really great program. So once you hit download it and get it installed you're, uh, and launch the program, you're kind of greeted with a relatively clean and basic looking interface. So what I want to walk you through today is actually creating a volume, an encrypted volume, and kind of show you some of the benefits that you can use this for. So let's go ahead and click on create volume. And you're given a few choices. You can create an encrypted file container, which is what we're going to do today. But you can also do a non-system drive, whether it's a flash drive or an SSD or hard drive that's in your system. And you can also encrypt the entire system partition or system drive. And we're not going to do that today, but this is also a great alternative to um, BitLocker. I've used both. And at work, we actually use Veracrypt as the basis for encrypting all system drives for laptops. So it actually works really well. But for today, let's do a, an encrypted file container. So I'm gonna go ahead and click next. So here we have another choice. Um, we can do a standard Veracrypt volume, which is the default, and you can also do a hidden volume. I'm gonna skip the hidden volume for now. If you wanna experiment with that, you can. The process of creating it's exactly the same. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit next. So this is where we're actually going to pick the location. So let me click on select file. And for purposes of this particular exercise, what I'm going to do is put it on my D drive and I'm going to create file name. I'm going to call it test volume. So what that's done is basically identify the file that will become a drive or become a volume. So let's go ahead and hit next. And here we can pick the encryption algorithm. I typically leave it at AES. And here you can pick the algorithm. I typically leave all this at default, but you can change it if you'd like. Now I'm gonna hit next. This is where we're going to uh, basically pick the size. So first thing I'm gonna do is click on gigabytes because I don't wanna do the math. Let's just go ahead and pick the size that we want. I'm going to do a very small one here just for the purposes of this exercise. I'm going to go ahead and hit two. So I want two gigabytes. Hit next. And then I'm going to create a password. So we'll just make something up here. Okay, so I've created a, a password. I'm going to go ahead and click on next. It's telling me I've got a short and easy password. And I know that I did that on purpose. So I'm going to hit yes. Now this is what unique about their their process is that from this point, um, the first thing I'm going to do is pick the file system type. I'm going to leave the cluster at default for now. And as you notice, as I'm moving my mouse, it's actually creating random characters on the screen. And what it's really trying to do here is to create an encryption key by random mouse movements, which I think is kind of unique. So you basically keep moving until your, your bar turns green. And when you're done, click on format. And it's basically gonna format the drive. And now it's telling me that the uh, Veracrypt volume has been created. So I'm gonna click okay, hit next. And it loops me back around to the beginning. So for the purposes of this exercise, I'm done. So let's take a look at a couple things and before we actually attach to it. So if I go to my, the drive, you'll see where it's created a test volume. You'll see where it says two gigs. 
but by itself I can't get to this volume it's just a file as far as the system's concerned it doesn't do anything else what I want to do is mount this as a drive so what I'm going to do is come up here and I'm just going to pick the T drive and I'm going to say and I'm going to select the file and I'm going to go to select the file the the volume we just created click open and then I'm going to hit mount it's going to ask me for the password and as you can see I now have a 2 gig AES and the the drive letter is T. So if I go to my file explorer, I now have a T drive with two gigs that I can copy data into. And once I close my system or whether I manually unmount, the files will get encrypted and no one will have access to it. Now, when I reboot the system, I won't see the T drive. What it's going to do is force me to come to the VeraCrypt icon. This is where I can actually mount and dismount uh, my volumes. So if you can take a look at this screen here for a second, you can see that I've already created a couple of them. I did the, here's the test one that we just did. And I also have one here that I use for as a backup location. And that backup location obviously is um, encrypted because I want to be able to actually copy some files from another system onto this. So this allows me to um, actually use this as a um, destination location for a backup, encrypt the, that volume, and then basically control how I mount and dismount. Now I have a couple options when I use this. So let's pick the drive that I just selected. And if I go to favorites, I can add, out, uh, add mounted volume to favorites. So now it shows me a list of my favorite drives. And I'm going to click OK. So the, the, what that does for me is when I click on VeraCrypt, I can um, basically mount all my favorite volumes in one continuous movement. Because remember, when I reboot the system, what's really going to show up is nothing. So I have to remount the drives every time I boot. This just simplifies that process by clicking Mount Favorite Volumes, and then basically allows me to in one fell swoop mount all my va all my uh, favorite volumes in one continuous move. I still have to pat or type in individual passwords if I've created individual passwords, but it still walks me through the process rather quickly so I don't have to spend time selecting and picking the drive letter and all that kind of stuff. Because I can change these drive letters anytime I want. At any time I can dismount this drive. So I'm going to click on dismount and it's gone. And if I look at my my Explorer window, you no longer see the T drive. And that's pretty much all there is to it. Um, as I mentioned, you can also uh, fully encrypt USB drives, um, flash drives, SD cards, whatever it is that you want to encrypt. Um, just bear in mind that, you know, when you do full drive encryption, don't make sure you save your password in a, in a very safe location because there's no no getting it back after that. Typically, I prefer to use volumes. That way I can control what goes in them um, and not have to worry about them. And I usually put them in on somewhere other than my primary source drive or system drive. Anyway, I hope you find this useful. Um, it's a great little utility. It's free of charge. As I mentioned, I'll put a link down uh, in the description below so you can go ahead and download it and give it a shot. Um, the only warning I'll give you is just make sure that you don't lose your password if you're going to use this. Um, there's some option for saving keys and doing other things like that. We, um, this is I'm just demonstrating the way I use it, and it's worked well for me for probably the better part of you know six to eight years or so. Uh, it's been a long I've been using this for a long time because it's it's been a good tool for me. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video, and as always, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification icon. Happy New Year, everyone, and we'll see you on the next video.